Hello guys, I am Sudhakar. In this video, we will talk about one mega event that will commence across all the IITs very soon. And trust me, this mega event concerns all the students studying in the IITs. So, if you are one of these students, you might want to watch this video until the end. Without further ado, let's begin. Campus placements one of the most critical events in your career. So, for all final year students, this is the high time that you take charge of the situation. As far as I have seen and learned from my friends, all the IITs commence their placement processes in June or July. For example, the Office of Training and Placement of IIT Madras has shared the detailed procedure for 2021-22. As we can see, there are various components in this process. For example, sending invite to the companies, student registrations, upload resumes, resume verification, and so on. Most importantly, each component has a dedicated timeline. For example, students must upload their resumes between 7th August and 14th August 2021. If we look closely, the tests start from 13 September onwards, whereas the interview starts from 1st December onwards. From this process, shared by IIT Madras, we can conclude that the campus placements at IITs are a semester-long affair, that is, from July to December. So, it's high time that you start gearing up for the placements. In this video, I will highlight a few essential things which one must do if they are appearing for campus placements. For example, identify the sectors or profiles. Prepare your resume. Study for written tests and improve your communication skills. Now, let's talk about how to identify the sectors or the profiles. As far as I know, companies across a wide range of sectors or profiles visit the IITs for campus recruitments. However, you need to identify the sectors or the profiles which interest you the most. To do so, you should reach out to your seniors and refer to the placement blogs of your institute. Like IIT Bombay has a placement blog on which one can find the students recruited by different companies in any given placement season. However, this placement blog is only accessible to the students studying at IIT Bombay. Let's have a look at the Placement and Internship Report 2020-21 published by IIT Bombay in the public domain. I will jump directly to the seventh page of this report. This table presents the distribution of offers in different sectors of the economy, excluding PPOs. PPOs mean pre-placement offers. So, you can see different sectors like engineering and technology, IT software, finance, consulting, R&D, education, services and so on. Once you have identified the sectors, you can look out for the companies of that sector visiting your institute. At this point, I would also like to warn you against the herd mentality. That means you should not pick up a profile or a company or a sector because your friends or most of the students look up to it. Instead, you should identify what interests you the most. So once you have identified the sectors or the profile and the companies in those sectors or the profile, you should move on to preparing your resumes. So, once you have identified the sectors and the respective companies, you need to investigate the profiles that they offer you on your campus. 
this would provide you with an insight into what they would expect from the students during the campus placement process. Accordingly, you should present or prioritize the points in your resume. If you remember the timeline shared by the Office of Training and Placement of IIT Madras, students are supposed to upload their resumes by the second week of August. And the resume verification is done by the third or fourth week of August. Do you know what resume verification means? It means that the placement cell will ask you to submit the proofs for all the points which you have mentioned in your resume. That means at this point you have less than two months to finalize your resume and collect the proofs for all the points. So buck up guys and get started. Let us hear from your senior what he has to share about how to prepare your resume for the campus placements. Thank you Sudhakar for the introduction. Today I will be talking about the resume making process. I will give you an overview of the resume timeline and a few pointers for making a good resume. So regarding the resume timeline, I would like to advise you to start making your resume by 1st or 2nd week of July. Uh, this is because during the 2nd week of August, the resumes will be frozen and will be picked up for verification by the placement team. So uh, once the uh, resume has been frozen, you are not allowed to make any changes in the resume. So to start well in advance, start writing your resume right from 1st or 2nd week of July. Uh, this is the time approximately when you will have a finalization of your BTEC, DD or your MTEC project. And you will also have a rough idea about the outcomes. So you can start writing bulletin points for the project. So now for, what is the best approach to cover as many resumes as possible uh, in the shortest amount of time by preparing? So start by listing down all the projects that you have done. So list down all the course final projects that you have submitted for the graduation of the course. List down all the assignments you have submitted during the course of the project, uh, during the uh, different courses. And list down all the self projects that you have done uh, during the course of your education. So now you have a list of all the projects that you have in the order of its uh, complexities. So now that you have all the projects, pick up each project and then make a mental map between the project and all the job applications which they align to. For example, a particular project uh, might be aligned to a machine learning job and also a controls profile job. So you want to align all the projects to different job descriptions which you can align to. And once you have these mappings ready uh, between all the projects and for each project what are the different job profiles they align to, these, ma these mappings are ready. So now what you do is pick up a project pick up a job job description which it aligns to and then start writing bulletin points in the perspective of that particular job description. For example, if you pick, if you pick up a machine learning project and you want to uh, write it in terms of job description for a machine learning profile, write down all the points which you want to cover. Then if you want the same project to be covered in a software description, then write down the same project with a different perspective so that it aligns to the software uh, job description. So once you have all these different bulletin points, each mapping to a different job uh, description profile. So you, for each project, now you have different perspectives already ready. So while writing these bulletin points, I would also advise you to do one thing. Go back to your submissions and check if you have proofs for these uh, points. For example, if you have quoted that I have used so-and-so method, uh, the method or the algorithm should be named in your reports so that that will serve as a verification that yes I have indeed used this particular uh, method for generating these results. So please ensure that you uh, you keep the proofs in well in place while you're writing the bulletin points itself because that will save a lot of time later on during the verification process. So we are at the stage where we have projects and each project has multiple perspectives to be looked at based upon different job descriptions and you have all the points ready. And now that you have the points ready, now we are going to gather the proofs for each of these points. Okay. Now you have done these three or four steps. What is to be done next? Now that you have the bulletin points ready, you want to maximize the chance of uh, getting these bulletin points shortlisted for an interview. So what happens usually is that a uh, lot of times a company issues a lot of uh, resumes and a huge number of resumes, and in order to uh, parse them. It resorts to uh, algorithm or software based uh, profiling. So what, essentially what this particular software does is it parses the resumes and then it will find the keywords 
and then it'll order the resource based upon the relevancy to the job description which it wants. So in this case, what you would like to do is that take these bulletin points and then add in as many keywords as possible for that particular job description. For example, if the key, uh, bulletin point was prepared uh, to uh, for a job description regarding machine learning, add in as many keywords from that particular uh, machine learning based job description. So read a few job descriptions which are uh, provided by different companies, finding the keywords and then add them into your bulletin points. Uh, of course, which also means that you're not going to uh, falsify anything, but you are only going to uh, augment whatever was written over there using the keywords. Okay, So this will ensure that you have uh, rich keyword rich bulletin points which are going to get you across during shortlisting. So once these steps are followed, uh, so what uh, you would also want to keep at the back of your mind is that uh, the uh, resume is a very costly space. Uh, in the fact that it is a single document which is going to uh, decide not just the entrance into the interview but also the first few minutes of the interview so the things you write in your resume is essentially the syllabus that is being uh, that will be questioned on in the interview so you ensure that you do not leave any blank space in the resume if you have points which are leaving a lot of blank space in the end try to fill in as much details as possible so that you do not leave too much blank spaces in your resume okay and uh, now that we have covered the resumes and made them uh, uh, filled with keywords, so I would tell you about how many resumes are needed or uh, what are the different types of resumes needed, at least in during our placement season. During our placement season, what happened is that we, have, we were given five resume slots. So it is not necessary to use all the resume slots. Uh, so only if we wanted to fill in a different resume, then we could upload it into a different slot. So we could upload a maximum of five different resumes. In general, one page resume is created for non-technical term firms and two page resume is created for technical firms. First three slots which we had were for short headers and the last two slots were for long headers. So in short header, you will have your current and your uh, college education details. For example, if it's uh, MTech, then it's MTech and BTech uh, CPI and the year of graduation and the college details. And if it's a long header, then you'll also have your 10th and 12th class education details added. So why this is important? Before you start making your resume, go to your placement team and read the guidelines which uh, the placement team mandates. For example, like at least in IIT Bombay, they'll uh, give you a set of guidelines uh, which uh, map to the amount of space you'll have to leave for the header to be automatically inserted. There'll be a, a margin space which will be prescribed by the team. There'll also be additional header space wherein once you upload the resume onto the portal, the portal adds in the details, the education details uh, automatically onto that space. So you want to know how much amount of uh, space to be uh, left over well in advance before you write the resume because later on restructuring the resume to uh, find this space would be a lot of uh, hustle okay so you want to keep this in mind that you leave this uh, amount of space or uh, well in advance so for short header you have, will have a different margin and for long header you'll have a different margin know what these margins are and then ensure that you start below those margins and start writing the resume so that later on it won't be a big uh, hassle to uh, change the resume Okay, so now that we had these five slots and uh, three for short header and two for long header, in general short header is used for one page resume and long header for two page resume, but it needn't be always the case, it's just a general guideline. Uh, the short headers, uh, of course, I have covered what it includes and uh, uh, once you have your two page resumes, you can always convert a corresponding one page resume from a two page resume by removing the details and then summarizing the project in one line. This is a useful technique that you want to know in case you want to uh, uh, get in, uh, I mean, prepare one page resume in a very short time. So once in the second week of August, the resume uploading portal will be frozen and the resumes are picked up for verification by the placement team. No further changes in resumes will be allowed after this point. So please ensure that the resumes and the required proofs are ready by the second week of August. If you are mentioning impact numbers, which are numbers that compare you with others or numerical results in your project, these will definitely be verified by the authorities. So you'll have to give strong proof when you mention impact numbers. It is very easy to get this proof. You'll have to just uh, uh, upload the approved or attested uh, assignments or reports which 
does mention these numbers else you can get a mail or approval from the professor saying that uh, the so and so numbers are valid uh, under my uh, uh, so i will stand responsible for these particular uh, verifications so the professor might approve by mail or by uh, handwritten approval and these will uh, be enough to serve as proof for these numbers and if you do not have such proofs, it might be the case that the placement team later on might ask you to remove those numbers because uh, impact numbers definitely should carry proofs. At least that was the case during our placement time. And so once you have listed all these projects and you have mentioned impact numbers and use the keywords, uh, please keep your points clear and understandable. Uh, just because it's a technical resume doesn't mean that you're going to write a point which the interviewer himself or herself has, is not going to understand by reading it. You want to keep it understandable and you want to keep it very clear okay and of course ensure you use all the space up and once you have written your resume uh, please ensure that you are going to get it reviewed by your peers your seniors and if you have some friends working in companies ask them to review your resume and this will help you twofold first you will get a third eye review of your resume and in case if you have done any obvious mistakes such as maintaining consistency or not maintaining consistency in full stops or not maintaining consistency in capitalizations of words these will be captured and at the same time it will also be useful in identifying if your resume is strong enough for that particular technical domain or if your resume has points uh, which are too hard to understand these particular feedbacks and reviews will be given by your friends and by your peers and by your uh, uh, people by your friends who are working from uh, different domains and your seniors in different companies so these particular uh, feedbacks are very necessary in order to rephrase your resume so that it can get shortlisted and not just get shortlisted but also ensure that it will drive across the point that uh, all the main key words and key aspects of the project have been covered okay and finally i would like to uh, tell you about statement of purpose documents some companies ask for sops so you'll have to write sops along with your resumes please uh, ensure that you will not make the SOP a rephrase of the resume. Okay, so you're not going to write the same points again and again because they already have your resume. So what you have to cover in your SOP is the additional details which you couldn't get into your resume. So remember the bulleted points which you have prepared in different perspectives. Use them and also use the uh, additional uh, dropped out information in these bulletin points and then try to create an SOP which is strong and which is going, it's going to back your resume. Okay, and you should also add in additional details uh, which regarding the technical proficiency and also if why you are interested in particular uh, job description or particular research field so these are the additional details which you want to put in your sop and do not make it a rephrase of what you already have uh, written in resume okay so keep it keep it different but keep it uh, in such a way that it's going to augment to what you already have written in resume together it's going to give you a very good uh, documentation of your projects uh, so that is what I would like to have, uh, like I would like you to have in mind while making resume, and also please adhere to the timelines so that you don't have has in the last minute. Uh, I hope this is useful. Thank you very much. Now I would like to talk about written tests. Again, I would like to refer to the timeline shared by the Office of Training and Placement of IIT Madras. According to this timeline, the written tests would commence in the second week of September. Even though September seems a bit far from now, given the variety of subjects that you need to prepare for the tests, it's time that you start studying for those tests. Look, there are, there are a few things which you must prepare for the tests. For example, quantitative aptitude, verbal ability, etc. Now, depending on the profiles or the companies which you have identified, you have to prepare for other subjects as well, like coding, data science, machine learning, deep learning, your core engineering subjects and so on. So it do take time that you also know. So why don't get started right now? To know about resources on coding tests, you should listen to Farheen. I will share the link of her video in the description of this video. Let us hear from your senior what she has to share about how to prepare for written tests. Um, hello everyone. So aptitude tests actually help companies to analyze your analytical thinking and problem solving skills. So actually these are very crucial for placements and will take a lot of work to master. 
you can't uh, escape aptitude and reasoning for the last time so uh, for starting with basics if you want to cover topic wise you can refer to books like rs agrawal or ravi sharma in that you can cover the topics uh, uh, in a detail and uh, uh, if you want to uh, if you want to test your skills you can directly go to websites like india bix from there you can uh, from that uh, you can give mock test and uh, uh, analyze yourself how much time you are taking for a particular question actually in aptitude and reasoning just solving the question is not enough time that you are taking to solve a particular question is very important you should take hardly a minute or so to solve a question so for that you will need a lot of practice so you can give a, a mock test on website like india bix and get to know how much time you are taking uh, you can you while practicing you should keep a watch or stop timer uh to to see how much time you are taking and try to speed up speed it uh, as fast as you can so uh, some of the topics uh, that you should cover which are very important are like distance time and speed uh, in which they usually take a train for example and like a train is passing through a tunnel how much time it will take to cross the tunnel or like that uh, you can see questions from percentage profit and loss mixture and allocations apart from that from the other side you can have questions for clocks calendar syllogism pattern matching sitting arrangement actually sitting arrangement is very important i have seen those questions in a lot of companies a lot of companies are asked question from that and some of the basics so uh, basic mathematics also you should cover like algebra and geometry uh, regarding triangles or quadrilaterals uh, those things uh puzzles are important puzzles are also important they usually ask questions related to puzzles in your interviews uh, for written exams i have already told you the topic so you can get to know which topic you should uh, you should focus more you can if you are not able to solve it timely you should look uh, for youtube videos to how to approach a question to solve it uh, quickly then after learning the approach you can practice Uh, apart from that for core subjects so uh, you should thoroughly prepare your fundamentals from whatever branch or stream you are you should refer to standard book to clear your fundamentals like i am from wireless uh, so i refer to wireless communication from aditya jagannathan and one more book uh, fundamentals of wireless communication by ts vishwanath so uh, you should refer to a standard book to get your basics uh, clear and then uh, what is more important is you should practice previous year questions actually that will help you a lot and uh, you will get to know which area needs more of your attention and what kind of questions how much difficulty level uh, how much difficulty level they are asking so you can prepare accordingly so core questions you can refer to your standard books and previous years and for active listening refer to websites and practice a lot for that uh you should you should be able to do it timely so yeah uh, that's all you should uh, do for your written test now comes the very important part of your placement process see once you crack the test you will get a chance for the interviews now how you communicate yourself how you present yourself that will decide your selection so you should try your best to improve your communication skills some of you might be very fluent in english so they can focus on other aspects at this time however some of you might not feel very comfortable while talking in english since most of the interviews happen in english you must work on your communication skills only then you can ace the interviews or i should say you can crack the interviews I know it's very difficult to find someone around you with whom you can communicate or you know talk in English even if you find someone you might be afraid of being judged so you can start with baby steps like watching shows or series in English participating in your classroom discussions reading English newspapers reading quora or any online platform where you can improve your communication skills you will gradually start gaining confidence trust me you have to take the baby steps towards a greater goal and it's high time that you start taking those baby steps 
let's hear to your senior what she has to share about how to improve your communication skills thank you sagar for giving me the opportunity to say something about the interview preparations and the communication skills so hello everyone so coming to the part where you have to speak about what you have written in the resume so all this while you have made the resume you have uh, prepared for all the you know all the tests and the core tests now comes the main part where you have to show or where you have to explain what you have done and that is a very crucial part because it doesn't because at some point of time uh, the the recruiter will read your resume but he will obviously hear from you and then you have to explain that how and where you are good about it so first starting with the in, uh, introduce with yourself in that case when you start with introduction with yourself so you have to leave bread crumbs i would say bread crumbs because that that paragraph which you will say as inter, as an introduction will lead to the corresponding subsequent questions so it's better to introduce yourself in a way where the recruiter is forced to ask those questions where you are strong about for example if i am uh, like if my profile is for wireless so if i start introducing myself and i will at the end of my introduce myself i will leave certain like i will mention certain projects or certain r and d work or whatever i have done in wireless so that the last line will be in his mind and later on the next question will be based on wireless only so instead of he driving the interview i will be the one to drive my interview that is the very important part of the communication skill you have to drive because see in a resume there are so many things which are actually in a broad perspective and anything can be asked from that so you have to make, you have to focus on the fact what can be what you can drive so that's the first thing secondly you have to be slow you have to be presentable you have to be like for example your main project your mtech thesis you can try explaining it to a very uh, like to a to a person who is not in your field and just ask them like how much they are able to understand and if you are able to make them understand then definitely the recruiter will be able to understand what you are trying to say so just try these things that first you have to uh, like first build up your introduce yourself second you have to uh like you have to explain your project in a way that the other person who is not in your field can understand okay they can they can understand thirdly uh for japanese companies like japanese companies in that you can actually make a presentation so in that presentation you can uh, like show off whatever you have done because they like all this thing and you are you should, you should always have a smile on your face a smile uh, like a smile on a face and a very and they have a uh, they don't understand the english accent of are be are people very frequently so you can definitely speak in a very slow tone and have a smiling face and a presentation so the next part comes uh, the gd now the in electrical department in my placement session i don't think that there was any company which conducted gd because it was an online exam but pre covid times there were certain companies which conducted a gd now for the gd the speak like communication skills is very important and if you are lacking that thing you can start you know uh, you can start uh, speaking in like in the starting of november you can have a like once a week maybe a mock gd or a mock interview interviews i would say for a mock interview you can have in the last week of november uh, see interview preparation or like uh, uh, brushing up your communication skills is not the exclusive part you will not get much time in the whole 6 month scenario to co- only work for the for, for the communication so in that case you have to work side by side and you have to improve your communication skills for gd like you can start in an introduction like the topic which has been given to you you can start saying that or you can start explaining that like what is what is the topic what it means and what is your view point and then you can and you can add in you can say that i open this uh, stage for other people to like uh, share their thoughts and opinions then later on in the middle also if uh, you know if uh, the the whole group is deviating from the main topic 
and you are getting to know that they are deviating, you can actually bring them, you can just say that we are, devi we are deviating from the topic, so let's bring back our main focus to the topic which we are uh, given. You can say these things, because these things also matter. And then in the middle you can say some points. What I uh, what we I have learnt in the how to base up a GD is that whatever the topic is given to you, just write it on a big page and like the page which is given to you, write it on a page in a big big you know in big letters. Because whenever you will read it, when you will whenever you will see it during the GD, some or some of the other thought will evolve in your mind. And then you can say those thoughts. Then you can even end also. Or you can say that somebody who is not speaking can say that this person has not spoke, has not spoken. So we can just give uh, opportunity for him to speak. So that small small things can actually make a very big impact in the GD, and the recruiters can hire you. Then uh, so and for all this, for all this confidence, you need a mock. So you can start in November. November will be very hectic for you all. Everybody, it's because the test will be going on. Every day you will have multiple tests, then results will be going on. So the emotional imbalance will also be there. It's okay. But you have to main, you have to focus on the main thing that is December interviews. You are going through all these things, but side by side, you have to give a mock for the GD and you have to give a mock for the interviews. I gave my mock in the interviews in the last week of November. Though it was very hectic and the first interview which I was I gave was very like I was very hesitant about it. Because I, I was not very sure that my uh, preparation is done. But once I gave the GD, sorry, once I gave the interview, the mock interview to one of my, any of my friends, then I realized that which topics I really know and which topics I really need to work upon. So that gives a very big, uh, you know, it gives a strength and a reality check, which is very important. So this all was for the online, uh, online uh, interview preparation, online for uh, online uh, procedure. Coming to the offline ones. So, for offline one, uh, when you come and sit in front of the recruiter, don't have a firm posture because the firm posture will, and don't be very loose, like very casual posture also, because that will both extremes will show a negative impact. The firm posture will show that you are nervous, while the casual will show that you are very you know carefree kind of person. You have to be balanced about it. Sit straight and. Uh, have a smile on your face and while speaking don't use your hands much because the hands like when we use the hands then the focus will go on the hands and so that is kind of a you know deviation from what you want to try to say and the recruiter might not be able to hear you properly so these certain these small small things will matter i hope that uh, this will help you out and uh, all the rest for your interview preparations